Now, I have spoke elsewhere in other videos about my belief in the idea that the aspect of our existence, which we describe as experience being conscious, represents nothing less than the immortal soul of the individual. Each separate physical existence experienced by an individual soul always represents the beginning or the first link, if you like, of the eternal future chain of physical existences which that particular soul will experience after its present physical existence. The reincarnation model of physical reality postulates that the number of separate, unique, individual physical existences which it is possible for an individual soul to experience within the finite timeline of the observable universe is infinite. The fact that a soul experiences an infinity of separate physical existences defines an individual soul as being essentially immortal in nature. The process of the reincarnation of the one individual soul popping in and out of existence within the multiverse can be, can be compared to John Wheeler's one electron universe hypothesis, where every electron in the universe is regarded as the one same electron zipping backwards and forwards in time within the four-dimensional space-time of the, the cosmos. In the infinity of separate physical existences, there exists an infinity of worlds in which the intelligent apex species of that planet have evolved into a more enlightened and spiritual species than that of Homo sapiens. The path of the evolution of the spiritual enlightenment, enlightenment of that species has progressed in such a way which eventually enabled that species to establish the creation of nothing less than a, a, a global technological paradise society on that planet. And if reincarnation is true, then what I'm going to say next is also true. And I really want you to think deeply about what I'm going to say next. Because by doing so, it is nothing less than your conscious living immortal soul which is doing the thinking. And it is that aspect of your existence I wish to appeal to. Think of it in terms of your conscious immortal soul becoming awake for the first time and becoming aware for the first time of its own individual immortal existence. The original soul was first reincarnated on this planet 600 million years ago and is marked by the, the point in time when all multicellular organisms which populated the planet at that time acquired the ability to move independently within their immediate three-dimensional environment. The intentionality of movement exercised by an individual organism represents the embryonic beginning of that which we will later describe as consciousness. Ever since that moment of the first reincarnation of the original immortal soul on this planet, every conscious living animal which has ever existed on this planet has been the original soul experiencing a separate individual alternative physical existence from the unique perspective of that particular animal. As an individual human being, we are all the one original soul experiencing a separate conscious physical existence from the unique perspective of our own unique experience of physical reality. A paradise society can only possibly exist in a civilization in which every member of the intelligent apex species lives their life according to the principle of the golden rule. Treat every conscious living thing, and more particularly 
every human human being you have to meet in your day-to-day -day life, the way they deserve to be treated, and the way you would like to be treated yourself, namely with respect, empathy, compassion, with inclusion and without prejudice. Every paradise world has a collective global consciousness which resonates at a frequency which reflects the fact that the, the social norm of that society is that they endorse the principle of living their lives according to the golden rule. When a soul is reincarnated in a paradise society, then for its entire existence that soul will know nothing other than living a life according to the golden rule. When that living soul dies in a paradise society, the moral vibrations of that soul will again determine that that soul will be reincarnated into an alternative paradise physical existence one more time. To all intents and purposes, an immortal soul which is perpetually reincarnated in an infinite succession of individual physical existences in paradise on every occasion can be regarded as existing in a domain of the soul which equates with an eternal personal reincarnation heaven which is unique to that individual soul. Reincarn reincarnation hell is not a fire and brimstone domain as depicted and portrayed by the religious churches. The true concept of hell is the eternal oblivion of a perpetual succession of individual shitey physical existences stretching out to eternity, with the conscious living soul in each experience in any given individual physical existence, not realising or knowing that its eternal immortal existence is actually in hell. Similar to the religious interpretation of hell though, reincarnation hell does equate with the eternal damnation of an individual soul. Now it is patently obvious that the current global state of society on this planet can certainly not be described as a paradise. It does not represent an entirely hellish existence either, somewhere in between perhaps, like a 50-50 balance between good and evil. I believe there is a reason why souls are reincarnated at this moment in time in the history of the planet, and in particular, at this particular moment in the evolutionary history of human spirituality. The vibrations of your soul is the smoking gun which betrays the private true kind of person you really are in your heart, and you cannot hide from those vibrations. It is my contention that the circumstances of our existence in our previous life in some hellish wretched alternative existence, that it transpired in such a way that whatever those circumstances were, it caused a change in the moral frequency of our soul from that of the global consciousness, the collective global consciousness of the society and the world in which we existed at that time, to a different frequency, which resonated in harmony with that of the present state of society on earth. Whatever the circumstances were, it is reasonable to assume that it involved some form of altruism, or perhaps in our previous life, we even sacrificed ourselves by performing some form of selfless, altruistic act. The reward for being a good guy in your previous existence in hell was that your soul was reborn here. This implies that if the common denominator which qualifies a soul to be reborn here is an altruistic act or altruism, that this condition must therefore also apply to, to all souls who are reborn here. In other words, 
if you were not the kind of person who would perform an altruistic act or show kindness to strangers when your conscious loving soul existed in hell, you will never be able to pass by this neck of the woods. You wouldn't deserve it. In other words, as immortal souls, we thoroughly deserve and have earned the right to be here. To all intents and purposes, we can regard this existence as a reward for being a good guy in our last existence in hell. It is my contention that this physical conscious existence represents the one and only opportunity which a soul has to escape the eternal oblivion of perpetual reincarnation hell and have the chance to immediately ascend to reincarnation heaven. This is the only time your immortal soul will pass this way. It is a never to be repeated one time only offer. Though extremely reluctant to do so, it seems to me that the only way to describe this one-off event in our eternal existence as an immortal soul is to compare it to the equivalent of purgatory, neither heaven, neither hell. Unlike entry to heaven being decided by the dude guarding the pearly gates, entry to reincarnation heaven does not require you to placate an intermediate middleman to gain entry. There is no religious organisation or person you need to give money to in order to get to reincarnation heaven. The immediate instantaneous destination of every soul who dies and leaves reincarnation purgatory is only ever one of two places. So how does a soul become fortunate enough to be reincarnated in paradise and so enter the domain of reincarnation heaven? Well, it's not through the luck of the draw. Any soul which exists in such a paradise world entirely deserves to be there. You have an important decision to make. You have a 50-50 choice. You can choose to do only one of two things. And with no exaggeration whatever, what you decide to do next represents nothing less than the most profound important decision you will ever have to make in the whole eternity of your existence as an immortal soul. The choice you have to make is straightforward. The first option is, from this moment on, live your life according to the principle of the golden rule. And at the moment of your death in this life, your conscious mortal living soul will be reborn into a physical existence in a paradise world within the multiverse. And by implication, your immortal soul will also enter the eternal domain of reincarnation heaven. And even if reincarnation is not true, what's the harm in living your life according to the golden, golden rule anyway? Now, if you are looking for an endorsement from your faith leaders that you should live your life according to the golden rule, then all you need to know is that in 1993, all 143 leaders of all the world's major religions proclaimed the golden rule, as in, we must treat others as we wish to treat us, as the common principle for all religions. Option two, don't live your life according to the principle of the golden rule. And the consequence of that is that at the time of your death, your physical existence will not be reborn in paradise and your immortal soul will not enter the eternal metaphysical realm of reincarnation heaven. The only consolation for your conscious living soul, if you choose option two, is that you will never know that you once passed this way and had the opportunity 
for your immortal soul to go to reincarnation heaven. As a conscious living soul, you will never know that you knocked it back. For instance, if you abuse a homeless person on the street, you are abusing yourself experiencing an alternative physical existence down in your luck. And if you abuse anyone in this life, then you are the kind of person who will be reincarnated in a world in your next life. That it may be that you will be the one who is being abused. And because every living soul possesses its own conscious free will, only that soul itself can decide its own fate. You can immediately ascend to reincarnation heaven or immediately return back to reincarnation hell. And in this decision, you are entirely on your own and this is the way it should be. And with regard to embracing the principle of the golden rule, only 100% compliance counts. It's an either or thing. It is a simple yes or no, in or out. A black or white situation with no shades of grey allowed. And in this, it's definitely a case of your actions speak louder than your words. If reincarnation is true, then the moment you make your decision represents nothing less than the beginning of the equivalent of the personal judgment day of your own immortal soul. And your own personal judgment day will end at the moment of your death. It's an ongoing process from this moment on. Now whether you go to heaven or hell after you die, will be determined by everything you will do between the beginning, as in now, and the end of your own judgment day. Any sins committed prior to the beginning of your judgment day will be irrelevant to the vibrations of your soul at the moment of your death, and the slate will be wiped clean, but only on condition that you embrace the principles of the golden rule as in, from this moment on. And with regard to when you start to do this, well, you could die tomorrow. The question you, you need to ask yourself is, would the vibrations of the moral note of your soul resonate with a paradise collective global consciousness? Think about this. At every moment in your conscious living existence, you exist at the exact centre of the observable universe. Check it out. At the most fundamental level, you are immortal and only you can decide whether your own immortal soul will go to heaven or hell. If you wish to believe in a God, it seems you yourself meets all the criteria for such an entity. There is no other existence in the universe which qualifies more for that title. In the eternity of your immortal existence, there is no God in the universe other than yourself. Now listen, why don't you hedge your bets? Live your life according to the tenets of your faith and your religion also live your life according to the principle of the golden rule. Either way, you can therefore be assured that when you die, your immortal soul is guaranteed that it is definitely going to heaven, either the religious eternal heaven or the reincarnation heaven. If you choose not to live your life according to the golden rule, you are of course banking on the chance that reincarnation is not true. But considering that there is a 50-50 chance that the decision you make may determine the eternal fate of your own individual immortal soul, if reincarnation however is true, is that a chance you are willing to take? <laughs>